program is brought to you by the Southern Institute of Technology. Hello, welcome to the Southern Institute of Technology's academic course, the Certificate in Intensive English Language, Level 4. Today we'll be focusing on Module 2, Mixed Emotions, with a particular emphasis on writing and speaking. Students may refer to pages 9 to 16 in their student handbook. Let's get straight into it. An emotion is a mental state that involves feeling of any kind. Some examples of types of feelings include delighted, very pleased or happy, furious, extremely angry, proud, pleased at your achievements, and apprehensive, worried that something will happen. Another word to describe these and other feelings is emotions. When someone shows emotion, they visually express their feelings about something or someone. To help illustrate emotions, here's our first dialogue. In this scene, brothers Jason and Michael receive some unexpected news. Let's see how they react. Hello, Mum. We're home. Is tea ready? Mum doesn't have work tonight, does she? You're going to be distraught if she does, because I'm going to make you cook tea. I hope she doesn't. Dad's going to be disappointed when he gets home if it's not on the table. Hello, Mum. You all right? You look anxious. I'm fine, thank you. Why don't you two have a seat? What's going on, Mum? Is Dad all right? Everything is fine, dear. I just have some news for you both. What's that? I'm afraid to tell you this. Now, please don't get too upset, but you're moving out. Why do you say that? You're both old enough now, so there is no reason for you to stay. I get too tired and grumpy, cleaning after you all the time. Now you can learn how to do it for yourself. It'll be good for the two of you. Well, I feel depressed. Is tea not ready then? Did you recognise any emotion words in that scene? There were several to choose from. Here are just a few. Distraught, disappointed, anxious, grumpy, depressed. This time, as we replay the dialogue, consider what emotions you would feel if placed in the same situation. Hello Mum, we're home. Is tea ready? Mum doesn't have work tonight, does she? You're going to be distraught if she does, because I'm going to make you cook tea. I hope she doesn't. Dad's going to be disappointed when he gets home if it's not on the table. Hello, Mum. You all right? You look anxious. I'm fine, thank you. Why don't you two have a seat? What's going on, Mum? Is Dad all right? Everything is fine, dear. I just have some news for you both. What's that? I'm afraid to tell you this. Now, please don't get too upset, but you're moving out. Why do you say that? You're both old enough now, so there is no reason for you to stay. I get too tired and grumpy, cleaning after you all the time. Now you can learn how to do it for yourself. It'll be good for the two of you. Well, I feel depressed. Is tea not ready then? Enough of the emotions. Our next lesson is about idioms. For those of you who are learning English for the first time, idioms can be a difficult subject to get your head around. So, what exactly is an idiom? It is a form of speech or an expression that is peculiar to a given people. 
in this case English speaking people. The confusion lies with trying to understand the individual elements of a sentence. The key is to evaluate the whole sentence and not to take each word literally. For example, to cry your eyes out does not mean that you cry until your eyeballs literally fall out, but quite simply that you cry uncontrollably. The opposite of that idiom is to laugh your head off. Taken literally, this would mean that you laugh so much that your head falls off the rest of your body, which is an amusing thought, but quite impossible. The correct analysis of the idiom to laugh your head off is to laugh loud and for a long time. Let's revisit Jason and Michael to see how they use idioms with the words laugh, cry and tears. I can't believe that mum is forcing us to leave home. What are we going to do? I'm not sure. I don't think we'll be able to change your mind on this one. She seemed convinced that this was going to happen. When my friend Sam moved out, his mum was so upset she cried herself to pieces. Mum should just be happy to have us around. <laughs> I know what you mean. I expected Mum to burst into tears the day I decided to leave. Who would have thought she would be the one moving us on? This is no laughing matter. We need to come up with a plan and fast. Unless we don't try to change your mind. We could just go flatting and have the last laugh. Once she sees how capable we are, she'll want us back home. And then we can go back to doing whatever we want. Or we could just move out of home and not come back. If the worst comes to worst, there's always my shoulder for you to cry on. I doubt that will ever happen. You'll be close to tears the first time you go hungry. That will never happen. I've never gone hungry in my life. Do you want to go looking for flats in the paper? Sure. It's not like we have many options. I'm not surprised that these two are finally being kicked out of home. Which idioms did you identify in that scene? She cried herself to pieces. I expected mum to burst into tears. This is no laughing matter. We could have the last laugh. There's always my shoulder for you to cry on. You will be close to tears. As we watch the dialogue again, remember to keep an ear out for the words laugh, cry and tears. I can't believe that mum is forcing us to leave home. What are we going to do? I'm not sure. I don't think we'll be able to change your mind on this one. She seemed convinced that this was going to happen. When my friend Sam moved out, his mum was so upset she cried herself to pieces. Mum should just be happy to have us around. <laughs> I know what you mean. I expected mum to burst into tears the day I decided to leave. Who would have thought she would be the one moving us on? This is no laughing matter. We need to come up with a plan and fast. Unless we don't try to change your mind. We could just go flatting and have the last laugh. Once she sees how capable we are, she'll want us back home. And then we can go back to doing whatever we want. Or we could just move out of home and not come back. If the worst comes to worst, there's always my shoulder for you to cry on. I doubt that will ever happen. You'll be close to tears the first time you go hungry. That will never happen. I've never gone hungry in my life. Do you want to go looking for flats in the paper? Sure. It's not like we have many options. Before moving on with the lesson, let's backtrack to a term we learned earlier in the programme, emotion. Remember that an emotion is a mental state that involves feeling of any kind. Now we'll look at using emotions as adjectives. We know that an adjective is a describing word that modifies a noun or other substantive. In combination with emotions, adjectives assist by describing how the noun or other substantive is feeling. A furious teacher, that determined young lady, my parents were proud. 
As we've learned previously, the ED and the ING forms of the adjectives have a slightly different meaning and use. When the ED form is used, the focus is on the one who is experiencing the emotion. Jenny was disappointed by the movie. Here, the focus is on Jenny and her feeling of disappointment upon watching the movie. However, when the ING form is used, the focus is on the person or thing causing the emotion. The movie was disappointing Jenny. In the second sentence, our attention is drawn to the movie. In dialogue number three, emotive adjectives will be demonstrated. Read the subtitles and listen carefully to see how many you can identify. Where do you think that paper is? I don't know. Do we even get the paper? I thought we did because I remember reading the comics on it. Mum? Do we get the paper? She must have gone out. This looks like it's from Mum. Dear boys, here is the number for a flat that I think will be great for you. I know that you may be a little insecure and apprehensive about moving out. This should help you feel a little relieved about the whole thing. I'm such a proud mum. Give this delighted gentleman a phone call. You won't be disappointed. The number's on the back. Well, that just made it a lot easier. Yes, it did. I wonder who this person is. Well, the only way to find out is to ring the number. We should write down some of the questions that we want to ask before we talk to him. That's a good idea. It seems as though Jason and Michael are smarter than we initially thought. Writing down questions before a conversation is a great idea. If you were paying close attention, you might have noticed several emotive adjectives in the note from their mum. Insecure, apprehensive, relieved, proud, delighted. Here's the dialogue again without the subtitles. Where do you think that paper is? I don't know. Do we even get the paper? I thought we did because I remember reading the comics on it. Mum? Do we get the paper? She must have gone out. This looks like it's from Mum. Dear boys, here is the number for a flat that I think will be great for you. I know that you may be a little insecure and apprehensive about moving out. This should help you feel a little relieved about the whole thing. I'm such a proud mum. Give this delighted gentleman a phone call. You won't be disappointed. The number's on the back. Well, that just made it a lot easier. Yes, it did. I wonder who this person is. Well, the only way to find out is to ring the number. We should write down some of the questions that we want to ask before we talk to him. That's a good idea. Now that Jason and Michael have decided to make a list of questions, it would be helpful for them to understand linking words and phrases and their usage within sentence structures. Linking words help us to connect ideas and sentences so that other people can follow our ideas. You'll no doubt already be aware of some common linking words, including and, we discussed the weekend and sipped wine, because, the match was postponed because the weather was bad, but she works hard, but she doesn't earn much. This lesson will focus on linking words that have a similar meaning and can therefore be swapped for each other. An example of two linking words that are similar in meaning are such as and like. He planted a variety of vegetables such as lettuces, potatoes and cauliflower. He planted a variety of vegetables like lettuces, potatoes and cauliflower. What other similar linking words can you think of? Consider the following. For example and for instance, furthermore and moreover, since and as, therefore and so. Let's see what Jason and Michael are up to now and how they are able to use similar linking words in normal conversation. All right, what do you want to know from this person? The most important thing to find out is what the rent is. 
although that depends on how many rooms there are. However, we don't want to have to find too many people to live with. How much is the rent each week? And how many rooms are there? We should ask if it's close to town, which will be a good thing. That would be really helpful. As well as that, we should find out how the place is heated. In addition to that, we should see if it has a garage or not. Yes, that is a good idea. I think we have enough questions now. Shall we give him a ring? Well, let's go for it. They're definitely on the right track towards finding a suitable flat. I hope they get the answers that they're looking for. Hidden amongst their dialogue and somewhere in the subtitles were some linking words with similar meanings. Did you find them? Although and however, which and that, as well as and in addition. As usual, we'll replay the scene again without the subtitles. Be sure to listen out for the linking words in the conversation. Alright, what do you want to know from this person? The most important thing to find out is what the rent is. Although that depends on how many rooms there are. However, we don't want to have to find too many people to live with. How much is the rent? each week and how many rooms are there? We should ask if it's close to town, which would be a good thing. That would be really helpful. As well as that, we should find out how the place is heated. In addition to that, we should see if it has a garage or not. Yes, that is a good idea. I think we have enough questions now. Shall we give him a ring? Well, let's go for it. Finally today, we'll recap perfect verb forms. And it can get quite confusing, so I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Let's look at the six different types of perfect verb forms. The past perfect simple tense describes an action that happened in the past, before a certain time in the past. It uses the following structure, had plus the verb plus ed. Before the troops arrived, the war had ended. In comparison, the past perfect continuous tense describes a past ongoing action that was completed before a certain time in the past. The structure to use is had plus been plus the verb plus ing. Before the power cut, we had been watching television. The present perfect simple tense describes an action that happened in the past or began in the past and continues in the present. It uses the following structure, has or have plus the verb plus ed. The family has travelled extensively around the world. In contrast, the present perfect continuous tense describes an action that began in the past, is continuing in the present, and may continue into the future. The structure to use is have plus been plus the verb plus ing. Women have been voting since 1893. The future perfect simple tense describes an action that will occur in the future before some other action. It uses the following structure will plus have plus the past participle of the verb. By lunchtime, the baby will have fallen asleep. In comparison, the future perfect continuous tense describes a future ongoing action that will occur before some specified future time. The structure to use is will plus have plus been plus the verb plus ing. By 2010, John will have been eating non-stop for 20 years. As I mentioned, it's all very confusing. 
Perhaps our final dialogue will help to illustrate the use of perfect verb forms. Hi, I'm Richard. How are you? We are great, thanks. I'm Michael. I spoke to you on the phone, and this is my younger brother, Jason. Well, it's nice to meet you. Follow me, and I'll show you around the house. The old tenants are still in the process of moving out, though. This place is excellent hot running water, and just before you got here, I had to turn the heat pump on, so you can feel how warm it is in here. How many rooms did you say there were? There are three bedrooms, so you can get an extra person to live in here with you. If you moved in on a Saturday, I will have finished work, and I can help you carry in everything. That would be good. Thanks a lot. Once you've talked it over with each other, let me know when you're ready. Thank you. What do you think? I think we should take it. Great. So do I. Let's do it then. I like a happy ending. Over the next few weeks, we'll see how the brothers are coping away from home. But it looks as though they're doing just fine for now. If you missed the perfect verb forms in that scene, they are as follows. I had turned on the heat pump, was the past perfect simple tense. I will have finished work, is the future perfect simple tense. Once you have talked it over, the present perfect simple tense. Let's enjoy the last dialogue once more without subtitles. Hi, I'm Richard. How are you? We are great, thanks. I'm Michael. I spoke to you on the phone, and this is my younger brother, Jason. Well, it's nice to meet you. Follow me, and I'll show you around the house. The old tenants are still in the process of moving out, though. This place is excellent hot running water, and just before you got here, I had to turn the heat pump on, so you can feel how warm it is in here. How many rooms did you say there were? There are three bedrooms, so you can get an extra person to live in here with you. If you moved in on a Saturday, I will have finished work, and I can help you carry in everything. That would be good. Thanks a lot. Once you've talked it over with each other, let me know when you're ready. Thank you. What do you think? I think we should take it. Great. So do I. Let's do it then. That brings us to the end of this episode. I'll be back next week to tackle more of those tricky structures, as well as bringing you a whole host of new words to add to your vocabulary. If you'd like more information about the Certificate in Intensive English Language Level 4, please call the Southern Institute of Technology on 0800 SIT to Learn. See you next week. This program has been brought to you by the Southern Institute of Technology, itu.sit.ac.nz.